All right, so here's what we want to do. We're going to ramp up the positivity here. And what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about sort of, and you'll see this cadence that I have. I have this sort of very negative outlook on humans and society and how everything works. But I also have this really, really positive thing that if you get a group of people together, you can do absolutely amazing things and you can do wonderful things and you can enjoy every single moment of creation. And if you do enjoy every single moment of creation, what you will probably put together is awesome. I've worked as a Disney Imagineer and we, if we ever got stuck, we just went and played laser tag. It was so much fun. That was, that was our vibes, right? We, um, I work with an improv consulting firm that designs all the trainings for Apple and Nike and stuff like that. You can imagine how fun and wonderful that is on a daily basis. And one of the things that we do in it is we always try to create collaboratively and look for bright spots. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. Those two things, and we're going to do some things, we're going to write, we're going to create here to really, really focus on these two wonderful things that we do not get taught fully to create collaboratively, and the second one especially, to focus on bright spots. And I do this one thing in my class where uh, the feedback on the final project, how it works, is every single person writes down what they want to see in the written up final project and what they think is already great about it. There is no criticism in it, right? It's all, here's what I want you to do, when you turn in the final projects and you have time to change, so here's what I want you to do, and lots of times they've already done it. But they also write great. And I, so what happens at the end of every single final project is, because the students are writing it down, they put it in a folder and it gets thrown out and we have about two minute transition to the final All the groups come together and there are 50 compliments. And then these people just get to bathe in this positive creativity positive compliments of them, and also these people who are saying, I want to see more of that, run into that, finding bright spots. We don't do enough of that. And we can do that all the time, and it can make awesome things. Um, so today what we are eventually going to build towards is we are going to write stories. Everybody's going to write a story today. We're going to do a free write, this beautiful, wonderful experience. And uh, I'll tell a little personal story, which is that um, I actually had stopped doing free writes for a lot of my, um, for the time that I was in graduate school. And then I met a wonderful, beautiful humanities scholar. And I had originally been a film and creative writing major till moving over to psychology, business, and design. And, um, and what she did in the middle of one of, uh, on our second date, she just said, um, all right, well, let's do a free write because we were in the uh, cafe. And she just assumed because I was from the humanities all the time, I had kept doing this. I'm like, yeah, I do that all the time. And we sat down and we wrote these stories. And we more or less fell in love writing 15 minute stories on prompts. And so what we're eventually gonna build today is we would sit down in a cafe, and this is a very common practice, and you just come up with an idea and you write something. And the idea is just to find some bright spot, some amazing thing. And then you share it with the person and the person gives you feedback and finds that bright spot. And of course, there's not going to be any criticism because what you produce in 15 minutes is obviously insanely flawed, right? It's just trying to find and bring out this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bright spot. So there's also a bunch of research that talks about the idea that when we consume anything, we really, really love it based upon its bright spots and not its flaws. Movies with plot holes but amazing moments and emotion and crazy action sequences that are good the plot holes don't really bother us that much. If they happen in a movie like Transformers, we'll, we'll complain about them, but that's because we didn't like the movie Transformers to begin with. Right? I know there are a million flaws in Marvel movies, and I love them, and it just doesn't bother me. Indiana Jones boy over here might be bothered by them, but that's because he didn't like the movie to begin with. Right? If you find these beautiful bright spots, that's what matters. But we are a society that is fortunately, especially your generation, just being okay with flaws, and we also should remind ourselves of that. So here's what we're gonna do. You guys are going to lean into it. Eventually we'll write a story. Um, uh, sometimes what we do is um, uh, we'll, we'll see how the prompt, if there's a prompt that's just gonna emanate from our discussion. But uh, sometimes we'll sit down and we'll just take a song, a song, we'll take a song lyric. We're like, that stupid lyric in that killer song. Are we human or are we dancer? That's a weird lyric. Why don't we start a story with it? And so you write it down and you start it in vivo in the story. He walked into the club 
It's sung, are you human or are you dancer? He walked in and he was utterly afraid, but he also knew he was utterly in his destiny. Right? This in vivo story, you're gonna create something, or that I did, create something that I thought was really interesting out of that. Other stories that uh, myself and other people have written in these three things about a collector coming to town who unites people by collecting objects and people think he's superficial, but it's amazing. A really cool idea for an action sequence based upon curved um, projectiles. It was just really cool. Um, uh, the idea of a group who lives on an island and then gets off the island and was happier when they were stranded on that island. A love story written from the perspective of being what you are now to a future version of yourself in love and hopefully appreciating whoever you um, are in love with at that time. And there's all these wonderful things that we find in it. All right, that's the heavy intro. Everybody stand up. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we are going to go through just a couple things where we're just gonna have fun and connect and stuff. So the very first thing we're gonna do, it's Ben? Yeah. Come up here, Ben. We're gonna play sync. So this is how you play sync. Um, put your hands down like this, and we go together. One, two, three, so let's do it again. One, One two, two, three. three. And then we either put our arms out this way, this way, or up. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't tell each other what we do. We're just gonna do it. And if we do the right thing, we clap. So ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, I kind of followed you. Yeah, all right, ready? <laughs> let's do it for real. One, One two, two, three. three. One, two, three. One, two, two three. three. Yay! And we clap. And so the point is to do it three times, and once you've synced with a person three times, I want you to sync with another person. The idea is it's very, very fun when you are in sync and fully paying attention and being spontaneous with another person. Um, alrighty. So what I want you to do is turn to the person next to you, do it until three times until you get into sync, and then uh, find another person. Get sync within uh, two people. All right, we're gonna actually do this. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome. So the point is, you can come up with some amazing things if you just focus for 15 minutes. The other thing is, we all know from the most successful comedians, from the most successful artists, from the most successful poets, most successful dance choreographers, most of the things they design never gets out there, right? They just make things all the time, and eventually they find wonderful things. And the other thing I want to say about this is that, you know, I think that there's just some really toxic part about college and under and, and grade school and how we do production is we just make things to be to have them done and be successful rather than really enjoying the process of making. And if you I, I like to say to some of my friends, like like if you're if you're if you are enjoying what you are doing, you are proud of what you are doing, even if it's not famous and successful and you have people who you love in your life, and you are not hurting the world, then you are pretty darn successful. Okay, so why do I have this line on the board? So I have this line on the board because this is how life works if you do it right, is to always think about the fact that you are on a line and you are always trying to get better, right? You are always trying to get better. Because here's the thing, we all said what our favorite desire thing is, our dreams are. Your goal right now, especially right now, is just to keep getting better. And you do that by making things, you find things, you get practice, right? Because 21, 22, 23 year old you probably doesn't make your dream project or your dream movie, right? 27, 28, 30 year old you especially if your dream is to be in these really high level positions, that's who, that's who it is, right? So you aren't really planning for 23 year old you to make all your dreams come true. Really you're trying to get 30 year old you to make your dreams come true. And when you think about that, you do different things, right? If you aren't realizing that I need to make my dream come true that you just said, happen tomorrow or in a year, that's where you take time and you practice and you do things like this, right? You don't rush at a goal. You take time, you get talented, till by the time you are 30, you are literally unstoppably full of talent and just nobody can deny that, right? And then in your 20s, you enjoy the fact 
that you get to do all these things and you have all these little jobs and you get these incredible experiences and you surround yourself <coughs> with people who nourish you on your creative teams. And remember that somebody out, out there is good. The other thing to remember about this is that remember, and I like saying this, always remember this, you have been an adult for about three years. You have been an adult for about three years, right? So you are in like maybe 8% of your adult life is gone, right? So you are really right here. And what's gonna happen is you are gonna see other people who aren't on your creative trajectory, who don't have it. And they have a line too, and this is their line. Right? And right now, you aren't that far away from them, right? You're making things, but they're flawed, and you can't just go up to the less creative people around you and just show that you are infinitely better than them, right? You can't. But if you keep doing your thing, you keep honing your craft, as life goes on, your lines will diverge. I have so many things that are on folders on my computer and deactivated YouTube videos that are somewhat embarrassing for me to look at now that I made when I was in college. What I still often go back to them when I'm going to give a talk at a company because I think 21-year-old Troy was on to something. He didn't say it perfectly. His editing sucked. Um, but he was on to something and he was making something special, right? And I go Rob from 21-year-old Troy and then use everything else that I've learned and honed to create this and to understand this. And it also, I know this is like, some people think this is like negative, but it's actually just an incredibly freeing spot. Just work on your craft. And by the time you are 30, you will be unstoppable. Just work on your class. Just make things. And by the time you will get there, you will be unstoppable. 